Firstly, I'm pleased to announce that for our tertiary institutions, they will be allowed to open from September the 14th, 2020, for all our tertiary institutions. However, as regards our primary and secondary schools, we're working towards reopening them around the 21st of September 2020. This decision is not cast in stone and is subject to a review of our ongoing modeling um, and what the procedures will be coming out from the Ministry of Health. Remember that we had said that we hope that the virus will peak, we will flatten the curve in the month of August. Hello and good morning. It's a brand new day and it, of course it's today in the news. My name is Precious Chukudi and I'm with my co-host Daniel Alpushaki. How are you? You look good. I'm fine. <laughs> Alright, let's just move straight to the front pages of the dailies this morning and we'll be starting off with Vanguard. Uh, main headlines are COVID-19, Vasti workers warn against reopening. Uh, the riders, we have there will be consequences also uh, we won't go back until non until non teaching staff uh, COVID nineteen updates. We have Lagos records uh, nineteen new infections as confirmed cases rise to fifty four thousand eight. Also on page twelve, release list of NDDC looters now Pandef others tax IMC and uh, stories about we have a uh, Vanguard's GM E E N C Adifaye appointed NIJ provost. On um, page 15 and 20, eulogize, eulogies as uh, EK one Chuku clocks 80, a Buhari ABC most to others lord his virtue. And stories beneath, we have on um, page 15, MBA versus Aero 5, we uphold rule of law, says uh, Kaduna Attorney General. And on page 11, Unilag panel collates a memoranda, begins sitting. And uh, on page 5, water resources bill, I will sue federal government. National Assembly uh, Governor Autumn says on page 15, APC mild in needless quarrels, uh, says Buhari. And lastly, on the front page of uh, Vanguard, oil industry wobbles through 2020. You can see more on that story on page 30. And away from Vanguard, we move straight to the Punch newspaper. And on the front page of the Punch, we have a uh, reopening universities now suicide, uh, so social distancing uh, impossible, and that's coming from ISU. And the riders, there's a strict protocols in place at airport for VIP uh, children resuming schools abroad. That's coming from the lecturers. School resumption learned from COVID-19 spike in United States. A presidential task force tells the states. Decisions on next phase of lockdown to be announced on Thursday, says the task force. Uh, you can see more of that on pages 2 and 7. And um, lastly, on the front page of the plant, we have Dot Abush. All right, uh, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is today in the news on Banga Live. Uh, my name is Damdola and I'm here with my co-host Precious Chukudi. So, okay now, so um, we have uh, Mrs. Kamala Fair, Mrs. Fumi Kamala Fair, a former labor editor of Vanguard newspaper. She's joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Mrs. Kamala Fair. Good morning, ladies. How are you doing this morning? We are good, ma'am. All right. Uh, good it's morning, good. ladies. Yes, it's good Can to you have you here ma and uh, we'll be talking about covid 19 uh varsity's workers won against reopening and uh, you know the academic and uh, non-academic staff in the nation's university education has warned that there would be drag consequences if the federal government uh wants uh ahead to reopen the ivory tower closed following the COVID-19 pandemic and you know they've been you know there, there was an information that came out yesterday of where uh, um, Governor Sonwoli was basically saying that uh, universities will now open and but do you really think that universities should open like in times like this? 
honestly we cannot shut our ivory towers forever that's the truth so but i also think that the stakeholders should be taken into confidence or consultation before the government decides to reopen and when i say the stakeholders i am talking about the non-academic staff union and the academic staff union though i disagree vehemently with the position of asu if asu is going to tie reopening to strike or pay issues then that's that to me is unpatriotic let the schools open in faces and i commend the lagos state government and lasso for what uh, lasso has put in place lasso has said it will open in faces which is okay don't forget that here we are dealing with grown-up students we're not dealing with babies here. These are children, most of whom are above 17. So they know the rules, they know how to play safe. You know, at a point in time, and the presidential task force has made this very clear, the issue of how you handle COVID-19 uh, I mean, rests with you and not with the government. So we cannot shut the ivory towers forever. I think that we can open them in faces. I honestly don't see what's wrong with Rio. As long as the stakeholders, NASU and ASU, are brought into the picture. And SANU, of course, you know, there's Association of uh, University Teachers, non senior staff. They too should, they, there should be a meeting, a consensus to agree on the conditions for the opening. And this should not be about, you know, uh, outstanding strike issues such as wages or non SANU length of years of other conditions of service. At this moment, I think that is very irrelevant. All right, uh, let's still look at uh, reopening of uh, universities. Uh, we know how much uh, our classrooms are so overwhelmed with students, you know, even writing at the corners of the classes because there's no space for them to sit. We know how uh, we have inadequate uh, hostel accommodations. We have people packing themselves like six to more people in one rooms. Like, how exactly are we going to, you know, fight this sort of challenge when they resume? Like, can it really be contained, you know? Because how do you want a uh, student to now separate themselves in classes? Especially a class that is not really enough for them to sit in with having, you know, overflow outside. How do you expect them to work on that? That's we are human beings. We are made to be able to adjust to situations that are crowded. Yeah, what I'm saying is that that's the essence of consultation with stakeholders. And this is why we are human beings. Okay? As human beings, we are able to adapt to situations. These things can be worked out. They can be worked out. If it will mean, you know, rescheduling lecture hours, you know. Um. I think we lost her. You know, I was basically asking her, like, because, you know, one of the things challenge we have even before now is, you know, inadequate, you know, classroom facilities for our students, uh, inadequate hostel accommodations. We see people who... Yes. Hey, welcome back, ma'am. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yeah. I mean, yes, I'm saying that this is the reason why we're talking about consultation with stakeholders. And don't forget that we are human beings. We are made to adapt to situations. If it will mean longer lecture hours, longer I mean, spacing in the classroom, so let it be. Because the lecturers have been at home doing nothing. The students have been at home for months doing nothing. They are eager to learn. We cannot keep them at home forever. We must take decide to conquer this COVID-19. We cannot continue to live in fear and suspend every aspect of our lives. Let there be stakeholders meet with ASU, SANU, NASU, and even representatives of the students. Don't forget that these are grown-up students. These are students above age 17. 
they too can participate in the reorganization of the classes and then we schedule the lectures. All of these things can be done because we cannot keep them at home forever. People want to, children, I mean, the youths want to graduate, they are bubbling with energy. How do you keep them idle forever? That's not going to be. We must take a resolve to conquer COVID-19 and not allow COVID-19 to conquer us. That's my take on this. All right, uh, ASU's coordinator, Lagos Zone, that's Professor Olusi G. Showande, has said that uh, reopening tertiary institutions without addressing uh, issues in the university would be suicidal. Do you agree with him on what he said? Well, I, I, I don't agree with him, honestly. I don't agree with him. The question I would like to ask him is, does he, are we then to remain at home forever? because we don't know when this will come to an end. Therefore, we people should think out of the bus. And as intellectuals, I'm disappointed that this is the way they are reacting. As intellectuals, they should know better. And they should be able to guide the institutions and the students and then get things working. It may take longer hours. It may take some form of sacrifice on our part. But to remain at home forever, it, that is not the solution and will never be. All right. Okay, now, um, you know, still uh, moving on from that, let's talk about um, NDDC. Um, the Interim Management Committee, IMC, you know, recently said that uh, the country would break up if it released the list of those involved in looting uh, the commission. That's NDDC. What do you think about uh, uh, the what do you think of this statement? Because we have Pandey. Uh, Pandev and also the Senate Committee of Nigeria Data Affairs saying that they should go ahead and release the list. I can see you are smiling. Go ahead and release the Go ahead and release. The country cannot break up because some individuals have put it. The country can never break up. Let us know them so that we will know the enemies of the people and let the law take its full course. Whoever has collected, uh, who has uh, been awarded a contract and did not execute the contract and has collected and has been paid should be made to face the law. It's just as simple as that. For as long as we continue to cover up, for so long are we going to continue to have corruption? You know, people who get away with looting forever and ever. But we must take the bold step to name them, name them, shame them, take them before the law. Okay, um, you know, Pandey have also warned that Ojugo should be prosecuted if he fails to release the list of, you know, the release the list that that means is trying to mislead Nigerians. Uh, so, what do you actually think about this? I agree with Pandey. I agree. If he fails to release, then he should be tracked to court because we are talking of public funds here. We are not talking of money belonging to an individual. We are talking of public funds, and the public decides the right to know. That is what is accountability. And so nobody, no matter how highly placed, should deny the public the right to know. Okay, but you know, Nigerians are actually saying that, uh, you know, they should investigate the matter. But a uh, convener of South South Reawakening Group uh, is worried that uh, further scrutiny of the of the statement could be viewed as a uh, publicity stunt and a scheme to blackmail those who are carrying out uh, legal responsibilities of uh, oversight and those are uh, pro prosecuting them for mismanagement and reckless uh, um, expenditure of public funds and also that of the forensic audit that is recently going on in uh, NDDC. Yeah, if I heard you well, Right, I think we're no, having they found them with the pins and the um, focus. Ba? I hope I had your question well. Okay, no, I'm, I'm talking about sure well. no, still talking about um, this, um, of course, the NDDC. You know, um, Nigerians are asking that they should investigate uh, the statement, but um, convener of uh, South South uh, Reawakening Group is worried that uh, further scrut uh, scrutiny of the statement could be view uh, viewed as uh, a publicity stunt and also a scheme of, uh, to blackmail those who are carrying out uh, legal responsibilities and also forensic audits in MDDC now. Well, I, I, I don't 
don't I don't see the issue of blackmail. I think they should name them. Naming them does not mean that you cannot go on with your investigation. If I am named as someone who has, I mean, been awarded a contract and I didn't execute it, it does not stop investigation. It doesn't stop investigation. And if I have my facts, I can then come out and say, no, I executed the contract. So they, I think people should be named. Investigation should go on. All of this are about accountability to the public. And I think it's what we need at this stage of our development. Okay, Ma, um, let's uh, talk about uh, the uh, the water bill that recently resurfaced. Uh, what do you actually think about uh, that uh, water bill? The latest I heard about it is from Governor Otong, who said he will drag the federal government to court. I don't, I don't understand the motive of this water bill. I don't know which land belongs to the federal government which water belongs to the federal government. All these rivers or waterways have their sources in the states. So, I, and, and some people have said that the water bill is an attempt to smuggle in Ruga that has been rejected. I don't know why the government tries to thrive in, in controversy. Whatever must be done must be subject to public scrutiny because this is a democracy. The majority of the people do not want it. The government should not impose it. However, if it has been passed into law, then people should go to court and challenge it. As the governor, as Governor Otom has said, it's already a law, so go to court and challenge it. But um, information in the public domain, domain has it that uh, National Assembly's uh, leadership is actually working, uh, uh, you know, with uh, vested interest outside outside the assembly to pass the bill without a due uh, legislative process. So do you actually think uh, it, it would be right to pass the bill without a uh, public engagement? No, 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 it will not be right. The bill to become law must be thrown to the public. There should be public hearing. Stakeholders should be allowed to make input before it becomes law. Because who is going to comply with the law? It is the citizen, and therefore, it should be there should be public hearing before it is passed into law. All right. Okay. So, so but uh, you know, still talking about it, do you actually think that uh, the control of the water should it be local or, or national? Should it be controlled by local authorities or national authorities? Well, it it depends. It, it depends if it's a notion. That may be federal, because if it is a notion that has to do with importation, goods coming in and out under the ports, that should be federal. But if you are talking of rivers, if you are talking of streams, if you are talking of um, um, some other streams, rivers, those ones to reside by discussion. The Atlantic Ocean application for national security and also for our interest. All right, we're going on a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss further on other matters. We'll be right back. Firstly, I'm pleased to announce that for our tertiary institutions, they will be allowed to open from September the 14th, 2020, for all our tertiary institutions. However, as regards our primary and secondary schools, we're working towards reopening them around the 21st of September, 2020. This decision is not cast in stone and is subject to a review of our ongoing modeling um, and what the procedures will be coming out from the Ministry of Health. Remember that we had said that we hope that the virus will peak, we will flatten the curve in the month of August.
All right, welcome back. And if you're just still joining, it's still today in the news. And we have our guest via Zoom. That's Miss Komolafe, a former labor editor of Vanguard newspaper. Thank you for joining us still. Uh, you're welcome back, ma. Uh, let's look at uh, what uh, you know uh, the president said, and that's what President Muhammad Buhari said that despite uh, the dominance of the APC at all levels of government, uh, the party is embroiled in bitter and unnecessary squabble. Uh, what do you think about the fights going on in the party? Well, you cannot have the party where there are no disagreements. Let's not deceive ourselves. Because of the diversity of opinion, definitely there will be disagreements. But I think that, unfortunately, encourage this. It's too late in the day for him. He has not come to realize it when the deed has been done. If the president had not encouraged the likes of Amosu, who stood against the party and sponsored candidates against their parties. And these people were saying of not being with Mr. President. Maybe things wouldn't have gone this bad. People, even his own ministers, even his own ministers to work against the party. Look at what happened in Rivers. The president couldn't call his minister to order. And in other states like that. So, it's, um, well, if he has just Woken, uh, I, I, I'm sorry to use those words. Woken from slumber to to re, to realize that. I, I do hope that they are able to resolve these differences. But what has been lost has been lost. Okay, I, if he had to fit firm on uh, or the party had taken a firm decision that look, if you decide, no matter how highly placed you are. If you go against the party decision, you stand expelled. Maybe APC wouldn't be where it is today. The truth of the matter is that people were encouraged because they were close to Mr. President. And the governors began to see themselves as lords over the electorate, which is very, very wrong. They would never have been governors without the votes of electorate and the support of party members. People should learn to abide by discipline. I mean, over the years in APC, is that people X Y Z is close to Mr. President, so he can do whatever he likes and get away with it. And the party, unfortunately, brought itself to this level. It will take a near miracle for them to get over this, because all that the bullying caretaker committee is doing it's all just trash going to bring beg people to come back to your party people who left you i mean how can you run a serious party like that it, it definitely those people you are the ones going to beg them to Hello, ma. There are many things. And anybody who they or party, situation where a governor, because his candidate is not elected, goes to sponsor another candidate to another party, it's not acceptable. A a a APC have done this before, and now the result is where they are now. Well, I hope that this effort will get somewhere, but they will have to go to the extra mile. And they Hello, ma. Hello. Yes, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Okay, so do you also think that uh, the fight in the party has cost them uh, some governorship and legislative seats? Of course, of course. It cost them Adamawa, it cost them uh, Benway. Because if the presidency had handled the killings in Benue better than it did, they wouldn't have lost Benue. It caused them rivers. Okay? Yeah, definitely it caused them some seats, some legislation. It caused them Zamfara. They had no reason to lose Zamfara. Okay? 
there are about four states now that cause them not to talk of legislative states because people will not adhere to party discipline and the governors want to lord it over the people and that is not and that is still going on and that is still going on the president is condoning that maybe now that wisdom has made him to put the vice president in charge maybe things will get better as long as the governors do not continue to lord it over others the governors cannot be greater than the party no politician should be greater than even the president is not greater than the party and that's why i think that what the gov the president did by dissolving the nwc and putting in place the caretaker the puni caretaker committee is illegal illegal with a capital i and i'm glad that some people have gone to challenge him in court nobody is greater than the party if you were greater than the party why didn't you contest in your own name why use the party's platform so it is necessary that people are made to subject themselves to rules and discipline within the party no organization can make progress without discipline all right, thank you so much, Mrs. Fungi Komolafe, former labor editor of Anga newspaper. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure to always be with you at all times. Take care. Have a blessed week ahead. And you too, ma. All right, you can equally like, share, and subscribe on all our social media platforms showing on your screen, as well as keep your comments clean on the page and so that we can all equally you know take your comments and then you can go on our website www.vanguardngr.com to find out more on our top stories uh till we come your way next time i remain precious chukudi and i have with me my co-host thank you for watching and have a fabulous day